first Nowhere The angels did say Was to serve for singing with us. Why don't you guys take a seat? Over the past year, you've heard so much about the crisis in Ukraine due to the war. And this year's Joy to the World, we're trying to figure out how do we help a local need? And so we're gonna help hundreds of Ukrainian refugees. I started this by myself in February of 2022. Three and a half weeks later, the war in Ukraine broke out. We wrote a grant, got a really big amount of money from the state of Washington that we had six weeks to spend. And so we used it to help use this hotel with 123 rooms that's now full of Ukrainian refugees. The biggest group that we serve here is actually from the city of Mariupol, which was in the news a lot this summer. It basically just got completely leveled. We came from Mariupol. The first day of war, our house was hit by a rocket. 
At the time, inside the house, we had five children. We ran inside the house and we saw how they were screaming. Our city is destroyed. And currently we are in Spokane City and we don't have a home. For the children, it's important to have toys and a place to be children. Every day when I get here to the Thrive Center, Vladimir is out sweeping the parking lot. He had his whole life and it just got taken away right here as he should be in his golden years. But instead of just being bitter, he's out there looking at like, hey, I'm in a new community. How can I serve? How can I make this place a better place? He's kind of like a surrogate grandpa to some of the kids. He's hanging out in the lobby, smiling, interacting with people. I'm always surrounded uh, with children here, and a lot of times when they don't go to school, there's a lot of them around. I was always joking with them, and I love to spend time with them. And the children always talk to me, and they say, Grandpa, Grandpa. And here, children are running here in the building, and they need some place where they can uh, run wild. The hotel's not usually set up very well for kids. And so we really need some help figuring out ways to make this space, this place more hospitable so that kids can run and play and be kids and have the childhood that they deserve. One of the things that we've been dreaming about is what it would look like if we put in like a play structure or a playground here for kids. Parents to be able to watch their kids and let them interact while mom and dad get a little bit of a break. That's really what we're hoping for and what we're dreaming about. So this year's Joy to the World, we're gonna stay local. You've heard a lot about the indoor playground we've been building at Valley Real Life Church for our local area. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand our vision even more. We're gonna build an outdoor playground structure right here at the Thrive Center to help hundreds of Ukrainian refugees, to bring a sense of joy to these families. And we invite you to be a part of it. You can go to connect.vrl.church to give and it's gonna be incredible. Anything above and beyond what the playground costs, what we're gonna do is we're gonna furnish apartments for refugee families who come off the airplane with literally nothing. So we invite you to join with us to make a difference in hundreds of families this Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks for being here on this evening. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, th that's one of my favorite parts. This is one of my favorite parts of our service on, on Christmas is that we take a special offering. And I, I don't know what your view is you know, of church when it comes to money and asking for money. I know it gets a bad rap, and, and in some cases, rightly so. But something we've done for eight years now is every Christmas Eve, we take an offering specifically for those outside the walls of this building to help alleviate an issue or a need that, to, that we can actually step up into. And I know, you know that your hearts have been touched like mine have for the war in Ukraine, that's happened in Ukraine, as well as you know, what happened in Afghanistan and some of the refugees, and they're in our backyard. So what an opportunity we have to give and 100%, every dollar that's given goes outside the walls to what was mentioned. And so when you came in, you got some of these bags, you know, that were there. There's, a, there's an envelope in there, if that's helpful in terms of giving, or you can go online, you know, as well. Because one of the visions that we have as a church, you know, just so I can just kind of speak to you, my heart a little bit for, for us as a church, is if Valley Real Life, the people who make up Valley Real Life, were ever to not be around, our hearts would be that the community, even though they never come into the doors, would notice and grieve. That that's the kind of impact that we want to have for our community. How can we meet needs? How can we help people, whether they ever come inside the building or not? That's the kind of people and the kind of church we want to be. So why don't I pray you know, for our offering, and then, then we'll just get started. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to just help people in need. Father, I just think about if I was in that same circumstance, I would just love the opportunity for someone to love on me and my family Thank you that we get a chance to make a difference for those whose lives have been upended you know, because of something that they had nothing to do with. And so, Father, we thank you for the generosity of the people in this room, in this place, and we give this time and this evening to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I don't know if, uh, like, like me, when you were a kid, you ever wrote a letter to Santa. How, how many of you guys ever wrote a letter to Santa? You know, just, I mean, it's cute if you're four. It's kind of creepy if you're 40. But, you know, um, this is something that we do on a regular basis. Now, uh, I heard of a young boy, you know, who wanted desperately the latest version of an Xbox for Christmas. So he asked his parents for that. And his parents wanted to teach him the importance of prayer and reflection. So they suggested to their son that he should write a letter, but not to Santa, 
but write a letter and pray to Jesus, you know, for one, in, in the hopes that he would just kind of do some self-reflection. Well, he threw a huge temper tantrum to which they got upset and they sent him up to his room. And while he was up in his room, he calmed down and he thought about what his parents said. And so he reluctantly decided to take their advice. And so he wrote a letter to Jesus. And this is what he wrote. Dear Jesus, I've been a good boy this year and would love a new Xbox. Can you see if I can get one? Your friend, Johnny. Now, Johnny knew that Jesus knew what kind of boy he actually had been that year. And so he said, I probably got to be a little bit more honest. So he ripped it up and he threw it away and he grabbed another piece of paper. And then he wrote these words. Dear Jesus, I've been an okay boy this year and I'd really like a new Xbox. Yours truly, Johnny. But then again, he thought and he said, you know what? That's actually not really true either. And so he ripped up that one and he brought out one more letter to give it a try. And this one he wrote, dear Jesus, I've been thinking about being a good boy this year. And I wonder by your grace, you could actually give me a new Xbox. But then he sat and looked deep into his heart, which is what his parents wanted him to do anyway, because he was trying to make the whole season about himself. And he crumpled up the letter. He threw it in the trash and he went downstairs. He grabbed his jacket. He went outside and right near their house happened to be a local church where he decided to climb the fence because they had an outside manger scene. And he grabbed the figurine of Mary. He puts it in a trash bag. He comes back up to the house, up to his room, placed it under his bed. Then he pulls out one last piece of paper and he writes these words. Dear Jesus, if you ever want to see your mama again, you better give me an Xbox. <laughs> Johnny, like many of us, I have a tendency to miss the entire purpose of the season. In fact, we've been in this series, you know, called Missing Christmas over these past three weeks, and we've just talked about just the, the different ways that we can find ourselves getting caught up into things, and we miss the whole purpose of Christmas. Like, for example, we can miss Christmas because of selfishness and pride. So think of Ebenezer Scrooge, right? That makes it all about himself this time of year. And so we looked at the character of Herod, King Herod, who really looked at himself and how this was all going to affect him and how he responded. And we can do the same thing. That we just think, you know, there's tendencies, whether we're young or whether we're old, to make Christmas all about, am I going to get what I want and I want to do what I want to do, instead of thinking that there might be something more. Secondly, we talked about how we can miss Christmas because of distraction and busyness. So I uh, think Clark Griswold, right? Even the good things you know, out there that we tend to do, can, can we get so consumed by those things that we miss the real meaning of Christmas? And we looked at all the busy people that were around, in and around Bethlehem that missed Christmas. And we looked at the innkeeper you know, as well that missed the reason for the season. And just like, like myself, I know that this time, even though it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, it can often be the most busy. Right, with all the presents to buy and the parties to go to and the traditions to be had, all of which are good, but they can get so overwhelming that we almost have this, I just want to get through this season instead of actually remembering the meaning of the season. Which then, number three, we talked about how we can miss Christmas because of disappointment and loss. Think George Bailey and It's a Wonderful Life where he loses you know, an aspect and, he, and, he's, and, and he's had disappointment and loss. And, and we've gone through that you know, as well. I mean, have you ever gone through this whole buildup of the Christmas season and you get to the end of Christmas day and you just sit back and you go, that was it? A little, little bit of a letdown because we try to make it so big and so magical that we can often leave ourselves disappointed. Or, or greater yet, uh, many of us come into the season and it's a hard and painful season. We suffered loss. You know, maybe you've lost a friendship. Uh, maybe you've lost a boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe you've gotten a divorce this past year. Or, or harder still, maybe you've lost a loved one. And this is the first Christmas without that person. Or it's the 20th. Uh, like I've mentioned to you before, this is a, a happy but hard time for me. It's my dad loved Christmas and he's been gone about 13 years now. And so there's always a time, you know, of mourning. And that's proper. We should mourn. But we don't miss the whole meaning behind Christmas. And so even through disappointment and loss, there's so many ways and reasons that we can miss Christmas, but we have to back up and we have to answer this question. What is the purpose and meaning of celebrating Christmas? In fact, if I were to ask you on this evening, 
How would you answer that? Is it just part of our American calendar? Is it just the next thing that we do on the calendar because this is just what we've grown up doing? How would you answer that? While you think about that, there's somebody who's been around for quite a long time who knows the real answer. Go ahead and check the screen out with me. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Linus has been around a long time. And what he, is, what he is quoting is he's quoting from the Bible in the book of Luke, where God tells us the reason that Christmas was originated. And he sends his angels, which are God's messengers, to tell the shepherds in one sentence what Christmas is all about. The shepherds are told by the angels, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. This is for everyone. This is for the entire world. You see, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. So we are not just celebrating an eight-pound, six-ounce baby Jesus. There is so much more to the Savior, to the Messiah, to the Lord, and this good news for those who would wish to partake has been given for everyone. So tonight, what I want to do is with our time left is to celebrate one person who didn't miss Christmas and see what we can learn from her. Yep, I'm talking about Mary. Because what happens is is that the shepherds hear this news from the angels and then they do something with it. And we pick up in Luke chapter two, verse 16. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a feeding trough or manger. When they had seen him, they told what the angels had said about this child. Everyone was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured these things and continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God. Literally, that word is hallelujah. That's what it means to praise God. And thanking him for everything that they had seen and heard. It had been just as the angel had told them. So at the time that we have, I just want to focus on that one sentence where Mary says this, it says this, but Mary treasured these things and continued to think about them, and in other versions, think about them often. See, there were three things that Mary did that we can learn from so that we too don't miss Christmas, even amongst all the good things that are happening and still yet to happen. The first thing that we learn from Mary is that she paused. She just paused. She she stopped to consider what was going on. She didn't let the event go by. In fact, let me ask you this question. When is the last time that you've just paused your life for a second and reflected? When's the last time you paused? We live in such a fast-paced society that we don't allow ourselves to stop. I think a more modern expression would be stop and smell the roses. When is the last time that we did that? In fact, uh, something that I do on a fairly regular basis is when I'm performing a uh, wedding, the bride will come up and then grab the arm of her soon-to-be husband, and they will face me, and I will tell them in front of everyone, just pause, and I want you to take a deep breath and breathe it out and look around. Why? Because there's been so much activity, even good stuff, leading up to that point in the wedding that they miss even the ceremony. And oftentimes they have to look back at the video to even remember what in the world just happened because it goes by so quickly. And so to pause, just to take a breath and to just reflect for a moment. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Humor me and just do this with me. I'm going to ask you to take a breath. 
I'm going to ask you to breathe in and then just breathe out. Okay, let's do this together. Ready? All of us, breathe in. Breathe out. Doesn't that feel good? Just to pause. Because here's the reality. You may have come to a Christmas service, but there may be a greater reason why actually you're here. And you don't know it yet. You may not realize how important this moment and this night could be in your life. And you're going to let the evening go so fast and go by. And you're going to walk out going, hey, wasn't that great? What's the next thing that's on the agenda? And I'm just going to ask you to do what Mary did, which is just to take it in. Take in this one hour that we have given you because I think God has you here for a reason. You are not here by accident. That there may be something greater than just the person who invited you to experience service. So Mary paused. The second thing that we learn is that Mary treasured. Treasured means to keep, to hold on to. It means to hold to something of great value. So if I were to ask you this question, what do you treasure? What do you value? What would you answer? Now, I know you guys are a lot like me in that uh, you have things in your house, you have things in your office that remind you of things that you value and that you treasure. Like I, I got a few things that I brought down from my office. The first one is this. This is called the Dundee. You know, those of you who are office fans, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but this is from our staff. Uh, and it says this, it says, longest lead pastor, Dan Shields. You see, I'm the third lead pastor at this church, and I'm fairly competitive by nature. And so the day in which I passed to be the longest lead pastor here, they gave me this, to which every time I look at it and I think, you know what, if I don't accomplish anything else, I sure beat the heck out of those two suckers before me. Yes! <laughs> I win. That's what it's about, winning. So yes, so that's one of those things in my office. Oh, um, oh, here's another one. This one is in my office on a regular basis. This is the commemorative football from our Seahawks Super Bowl. Come on now, can I get an amen? You know, from when they actually won. I grew up in Seattle, so I lived through the pain and the suffering. And so yes, I remember fondly, you know, that moment. And I know it's a hard year, you know, this year, but as long as Russell Wilson keeps losing, we'll get better draft picks and this is gonna be good moving forward. So that's one of those things. Oh, uh, I'm gonna date myself a little bit. Um, in 1984, uh, I was nine years old. And uh, I was in, uh, I got a chance to go to Los Angeles where my grandfather invited me to go with him to the Los Angeles Olympics. And so this is from 1984 from the Olympic Games. And I have all these pins of the different events and the things that we went to. And, and, and it wasn't just the events that I remember. I remember conversations with my grandfather. You know, obviously he's not here now and, and, and how much he supported me in all of my activities and events. Anytime that he could, he was always there. And I think he's partly responsible for my love, you know, of sports and my participation in them as well. Oh, oh here's one last one. I know it looks like it's a perfume bottle, but it's not. Uh, a couple weeks ago, it's a perfume bottle, but it's not perfume in it. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I got a chance to go to Egypt. And when I was in Egypt, we actually came across the Nile River. And so when I was at the Nile, I started thinking instantly, man, there's so many stories from our Bible and, you know, let my people go and Pharaoh and Moses and all this other kind of stuff. And so I grabbed a water bottle and I filled it with Nile water. Now that may not be legal, but just don't tell anybody. And I put it in my suitcase and I put it here because I want to remember that this water is actually from the Nile. And the Bible that I read about is not just a religious book, it's a historically accurate and geographically accurate book. And so this is just one of those reminders for me. I know that you have things as well. Uh, you look at your house, you have, you have reminders, you have different things. Some of you have sayings that have been impactful for your life that you hold on to, that you treasure. Like here's a saying that I kept over from the last pastor that I said, I need to keep this in my office. This says, find something you would die for and live for it. And so it's just a great reminder and, and things when times are hard and difficult to be like, that is worth living for. And so it's just helpful for me. But probably the most uh, impactful picture in my office is this one. And that is our trip uh, to Disney World. And this is a number of years ago to give you an idea that uh, these are my two kids. I have a third. We adopted a child named Angeli. She's not you know, in this picture because we hadn't adopted her yet. And my son, Josiah, uh, is now 20 years old. So just a little bit dated. But the reason this is important is my son, Alex, turned five while we we're at Disneyland, Disney World, which was amazing. But this was the last um, vacation and experience I had with my dad before he passed away. So we knew that uh, he had an autoimmune deficiency disorder and it was gonna be about six months is what they told us that he was gonna live. 
And so I remember asking my dad, hey, dad, is there something you haven't done yet that you wanted to do? And he said, I always wanted to travel, uh, but he just didn't have the strength and energy to be able to do that. But I also knew, the, knew that how much he loved Disney because of how detail-oriented they were. And so I said, why don't we go to Epcot and you can kind of see the world and when you can experience that. It was so not about Disney World. It was all about the conversations that we had, those meaningful moments, you know, that I will treasure forever. And I knew it at the time how important this was going to be for even my older son to remember that trip. My younger son barely remembers it, but it's something that I will hold dear for the rest of my life. And I know you have those same experiences. You have those same pictures. You have those photos that remind you of important moments that you treasure. And so as we go back to the story, what was it that Mary treasured? What did she treasure? You see, there was actually a second story in the same chapter that say the same words that we just read. You see, Jesus was now 12 years old. It's one of the only stories we have in our Bibles of when he was a child. He's 12 years old, and as good Jewish parents, they would always go to Jerusalem for some of the major festivals like Passover. And so they head to, to, from where they were living to Jerusalem for Passover, and you'd never travel, or you'd rarely travel by yourself. You'd travel in caravans. So you'd have groups of friends and family members that would go and experience this incredible holiday and this incredibly meaningful part of the Jewish culture. So they went, and then they started to head home. And somewhere between day one and three, they realized, we've lost Jesus. Now, I don't know if you've ever lost a child before, even for a few seconds. You know, you remember how your heart would just kind of pound? You're like, I don't know where they, they could be in the same mall. They could be in the same shopping center. I lost Josiah for like a minute and a half at Disneyland. I was like, I don't know where he is. So there's just instant panic. Now, that'd be bad, but imagine losing the son of God. Okay, it's a whole other, other notch up. So they're frantically looking and you're thinking, how does that happen? How do they go days without noticing? Well, you know, you've done this. Well, I thought he was with you. Well, I thought he was with your Uncle Frank. Well, I thought he was with your friend. Now, where's Jesus? We don't know. So they trace their steps back. They go back to Jerusalem. And guess where they find him? In the temple, asking the religious leaders questions. And so this is what we read in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Jesus says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. Good job, Jesus. Don't miss this. But his mother Mary treasured all these things in her heart. It's the second time in one chapter that she is treasuring something in her heart. What is she treasuring? Well, the first thing we know is she's treasuring the words that are spoken about her son from God to the shepherds. This time she's treasuring what Jesus himself is saying to her. Basically, I can just sum it up this way. Mary treasured Jesus. And these are specific moments that you would think about often as he went through life and she went through life with him. So for us not to miss Christmas, we are encouraged to treasure Jesus by treasuring the words spoken about Jesus in our Bibles and the words that Jesus himself speaks about himself as well as the things that he does. The greatest treasure that you and I can receive on Christmas isn't a gift from somebody else. It's actually Jesus himself, not only for eternity's sake, but also for an abundant life's sake that he promises. So the three things that we learn from Mary is first, Mary paused. Second, Mary treasured, and lastly, Mary remembered. Mary remembered the things we most treasure, we think about often. And it says she thought about these things often. Now, we remember things so that we don't forget them or we don't repeat them if it's things that we don't like, you know, or things that we made mistakes that we've made. Now, uh, one of the things that I do like about social media, there's a lot of things I don't like about it, but one of the things I do like about social media is those time-lapse things, the capsules that remind you on every day what happened significantly on that day last year or three years ago or five years ago, because I'm such a present future person that I forget of things that have happened, you know, even within the recent years. It always kind of makes me laugh, chuckle, or remember. For us, we have been given God's word so that we don't have to remember every little nuance. You have an opportunity to reflect on Jesus and his words through his word. But you know the other reminder, like a memorabilia item in our office that we have? The cross. 
The cross is a constant reminder. Some of you wear crosses as jewelry, but in the same way that I have a ring that reminds me of my commitment to my wife and her commitment to, to me, the cross is a reminder that the Savior came and there was nothing that I could do to reunite myself back to God, no matter how good I am, that I needed a Savior to take the place for my sins, for something I rightly fully deserved, and that cross is that reminder. It's a great reminder for us. And you've heard us as pastors, we've said, you know, Christmas is all about Jesus. But I want to remind you, from God's perspective, Christmas is actually about you. He sent his son for you. He sent your son for me. That's how much he loved the world. He gave his one and only son. And the cross is a reminder of the powerful commitment that he has for us. You see... I want you to process for a second. Consider this. If what I'm saying is not true, then it changes nothing. And have a great Christmas. Really, I really truly mean that. I want you to have a great Christmas. But if what I'm saying is true, it changes everything. And that's what I want you to process. But God, being who he is, leaves the choice up to you and me. And so as we wrap up, I don't want you to miss Christmas. So I'm asking you to pause, like Mary, to treasure and to remember Jesus. Uh, in fact, uh, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We want to actually put this into application right now. So we're going to go into three songs. And during these three songs, two of which are going to be very familiar to you, the first one, I just want you to pause. I just want you to ponder what's being said and what's being sung over you. In fact, I want you to remain seated as the worship team leads us in the song. Now, as I told you, you know, earlier, is that just like the shepherds, to say or sing praise to God is to say or sing the word hallelujah. It literally means God be praised. That's what the word hallelujah means, because I know it's not a word we used often today. God be praised or praise God. So hallelujah, praise God for sending the Savior. Hallelujah, praise God for sending the Messiah. Hallelujah, praise God for sending the Lord. And I want you just to sit there and process. The second song, I want you to pro process thinking, is this something I believe in and I'm willing to treasure? And you're going to be invited to participate. And then the third song, I want you to remember and ponder. And that third song, you're going to be very familiar with because it's called Silent Night. And it's the reason that you have candles in your bags when you came in. Now, to make sure you leave with all of the hair that you have when you came in, as well as to avoid wax on the person next to you, there is a proper way to light a candle. And this is the proper way. The unlit candle, excuse me, goes into the lit candle, thus avoiding wax on the person next to you. You all look so nice tonight, and I don't want you to leave with wax all over yourself or on the person next to you. That's embarrassing. So I'm just trying to help you enjoy that moment. So when that time comes, that's the way we want you to light that candle. So again, three songs. Pause, treasure, remember. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have just to pause like your, your servant Mary did, to reflect. And I pray that we would be able to do that right now. Father, I pray also that we would be able to treasure and that we'd be able to remember what this season is all about. Help us to not miss Christmas this year. And so Lord, as we just kind of take a breath in and out, may you speak to us clearly now more than ever. We are open. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
birds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said. Stand up and let's sing this song, Oh Holy Night.
Amen. Go ahead and take a seat. Hopefully you've got a chance to pause, to now treasure, and now I'm going to ask you to, to remember. As we go into this, this song, it's probably, probably the most famous, especially in America, uh, Christmas song that is sung. Uh, whether you go to church or not, you've heard Silent Night. But what you may not know is, is the reason we light candles as part of this is because Jesus is also called the light of the world. And uh, I, this could be just a candle lighting, or it could be so much more, depending on how you want to receive it. You see, the idea is, is that the light comes to you. It doesn't hop over you. And as you have a chance to light the candle, it can represent Christ's light coming into your life. And if you're a follower of Christ, you know already, it's also an opportunity to visually remember that it, God has given us the task to share that light that we've received to other people. And so I'm going to encourage you not just to sing the song. We can just mouth the words and do that. But you know that worship songs are just prayers to melody. And it depends on you and I. And so my prayer is that this would turn into a prayer instead of just to a, a song that's been sung. So I'm going to invite the ushers to go ahead and come on down now. And like we mentioned earlier, this is going to be the opportunity for you to light your candle and to spread it out. And my hope is that this will be more than just receiving a light. And just process. Think about the words that you're singing. And may this be a treasured and impactful moment as you do this now. as the room lights up and to watch your faces actually light up. One of the things that we do as a tradition here is I want you just to gently kind of lift it over your head and then go ahead and take a look around and take in the moment. Such a cool experience. 
Go ahead and bring it down. And once again, in order not to get the wax on the person in front of you, go ahead and put your hand behind it and gently blow it out. I don't know what this last year has been for you, but I know that COVID and different things have been a real challenge for so many. And so as we go into this next year, um, I want to invite you to come back. Uh, because I think it's a journey that uh, we all want to go on. Uh, and and if, if you don't believe in God and you just kind of came to this service, that's okay. We want you to come. There's no perfect people allowed in this church. We're called Valley Real Life for a reason. And we go on a real journey with all of our ups and downs, and we just try to figure out what God is trying to say to us, and we try to apply that into our lives as we learn and ask questions. And so we're going to start a new series, though, uh, calling, called A Healthy You. And uh, the God has a lot to say in this season, in this time, about our mental health. And we want to walk through that, and our spiritual health, and our physical health, and our emotional health. So we're going to spend four weeks talking about that. It's going to begin this next Thursday and Sunday morning. And, and so if any of that is of interest to you, I want to encourage you to come back and to go on that journey with us. In fact, if you're a person who's against you know, organized religion, so are we. We're the most unorganized place that you can find. So we'd love to have you be a part of what God's doing here. In addition, if this is a moment you want to remember and, and cherish with photos and different things, we have a photo booth that's out there that's set up just so that you can, you know, once again, grab those pictures and create those memories with your friends or family. And we want to invite you to be able to do that as well. And as we leave, there's multiple different exits that you can take. But with that being said, why don't we stand and close our time together in prayer? God, thank you so much. Lord, for what has happened and what's going to happen in these next couple days as we continue to celebrate and remember what you have done. I pray that that would be at the center of our hearts and minds, even as we open presents and laugh and, and still do some of the food and the traditions that we have. And Father, I just pray for every person in this room that you would just speak to them loudly and clearly and that we'd be open to what it means to make you not just the reason for this season, but beyond. We love you and thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, have a great Christmas. We'll hope to see you soon.